After learning about cardiovascular diseases, its progression and prevention, we can now summarize all the previous knowledge that we have gained in the playlist and compile them into this one video. This video is going to be a very powerful video and a very important one too. We are going to discuss the dietary guidelines of patients with cardiovascular disease. To know more, watch the full video. everybody this is your nutritionist on the go Kamal Deep Singh Ajla from Eru Diet Nutrition let's begin the final the most important and a very powerful video which will summarize this cardiovascular disease playlist that you all have been watching for a last couple of months we have shared so many videos in this playlist this will be the final one and then we will move on to the next disease so without further ado let's look at what I have compiled the whole dietary guidelines of a cardiovascular disease patient on this board behind me so before starting that if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon you can also follow me on facebook on instagram to keep yourself updated with all my postings if you have not watched this playlist of cardiovascular disease or the previous playlist in which we talk about diabetes and food groups, do watch them and increase the level of knowledge that you already have about these diseases. The more knowledgeful you are, the better you can take care of yourself. So let's get started. Right here, before beginning the video, let's discuss two shorthand notes. Number one, how about prevention from coronary artery disease or arteriosclerosis or any other heart problem. So number one is we have to manage our blood glucose, blood sugar, our blood pressure and our lipids. What is the best way to manage these things? With the help of changes in your lifestyle. It's as simple as that. So we are going to keep our blood sugars in control. We are going to keep our blood pressure in control. And if we talk about lipids, we are going to keep our HDL high our triglycerides low and our VLDL as low as possible. Why haven't I written LDL over here? Because LDL lipoproteins are carriers of cholesterol and triglycerides. If you control the total cholesterol and you control the triglycerides and VLDLs, your LDL levels will start coming back into normal range. So rather than focusing on cholesterol and LDL particles, we are going to focus on triglycerides and VLDL particles, okay? So what is the other thing that we have to focus on? Lifestyle. We have to reduce our uh, stress. We have to increase our sleep. Now, I don't mean if you are sleeping eight hours already, I don't want you to increase your sleep, but if you are under sleeping, then bring your sleep up. If you are oversleeping, then cut off your sleep hours down. Okay, come to an optimum range. And last one is exercise. Exercise is very important for all the heart patients. Whatever you can do comfortably without stressing out your body. Okay, so now let's start with the diet aspect. Some do's and don'ts will be cleared when we are discussing all these things. So bear with me. So number one, vegetables. The more amount of vegetables you have, the better are your chances of recovery. For a general, typical cardiovascular disease patient, I do recommend them to have at least six to eight bowls of vegetables. Now here is the key when we are talking about vegetables. The vegetables should be either raw, or they should be steamed or they should be boiled. I am not talking about sorted vegetables or vegetables that you are deep frying or the vegetables that you are cooking in tadka or in the Indian curry style. They don't count. The only vegetable intake that is going to help you is either boiled raw in form of salads or in form of soups or steamed vegetables. So consume more amount of vegetables. Which vegetable is the best for a cardiovascular patient? I would suggest consumption of one beetroot every day. 
in form of a salad. Beetroot is an excellent source of nitric oxide which can actually help you lower your risk of artery clogging that is atherosclerosis. The other important thing is vitamin C also helps the recovery process from arteros atherosclerotic changes in your arteries. So there is a misconception that only citrus fruits are rich sources of vitamin C but no. Almost all the vegetables are also good source of vitamin C. That's why we are preferring vegetables over fruits here. Which vegetables should we avoid if we are a heart patient? I would suggest you to avoid roots and tubers and starchy vegetables like potato. Reduce their consumption if you are a non-diabetic. Eliminate their consumption if you are a diabetic. Which other group of vegetables should you be very careful of? the green leafy vegetables vegetables like spinach or we Punjabi are pretty much fond of mustard leaves so we call it sag so we have to be very careful from green leafy vegetables now what is the problem with green leafy vegetables why should we totally avoid green leafy vegetables if we are if we are on heart medication See, when you are having a coronary artery disease, there is a chance of blood clot uh, formation in your arteries. We've discussed it in the previous video. These certain vegetables increase the clotting factor, the clotting power of your body. When you consume, consume green leafy vegetables, they increase the clotting ability of your body. But when you take a look at your medication, then we are also having antiplatelet and anti-clotting medicines like warfarin or any other medicine which performs a similar function to avoid the clot formation because that clots can cause embolism in your body which can be pretty much uh, life threatening and disastrous. So green leafy vegetables in general are good for clotting as well as good for your cardiac muscles. So any person that is not having a heart disease at the moment who is not taking any medications related to his heart disease is free to eat as much as green leafy vegetables as he wants because that are actually going to help his heart. But once you get sick, once you start developing coronary artery disease or other heart diseases and you start anti-clotting and anti-platelet medication, you are strictly advised to stop the consumption of green leafy vegetables. Also, the green leafy vegetables are a very concentrated and rich source of potassium. So if you are a heart patient, you need to keep your electrolytes in check. So consumption of so much of potassium can also imbalance your electrolytes and cause you arrhythmia problem. So avoid green leafy vegetables, but have as many vegetables as you can. Next is whole grains. The more amount of whole grains you choose instead of simple wheat, corn, white rice or refined flour, the better it's going to be. You can go for oats, you can go for brown rice and also you can go for whole grains like sorghum and millets are the absolute best of the whole grain cereals. The next is, but again, have them in limited amounts. Okay. Next is foods like ginger, garlic and other spices, green tea and olive oil. The reason these are your go-to foods, you can consume these foods every day. Why? Because these foods have tons of anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties which are very good for your health. So do include ginger, garlic and other spices as well as green tea and olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil into your diet. You can put it on salad, you can put it in your soup, but do not start making salty vegetables out of olive oil or start making tarka out of olive oil. Next is nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are very rich source of phytonutrients, also very rich source of omega-3 fatty acids as well as fiber. Now, from vegetables to grains to uh, nuts and seeds. All these food groups have high amounts of fiber. Fiber is the key of controlling blood sugars and blood pressure and lipids. The more, the better for you. So do consume some almonds and walnuts in soap form every day. Maybe even it's winter or it's summer, consume walnuts and almonds throughout the year. And crushed flax seeds, chia seeds and sesame seeds. 
you can go for flax and sesame alone, but if you have any thyroid complications, I would suggest you do not consume flax, instead go for chia seed and sesame seeds, crushed form throughout the year. Now, there's another interesting thing. In Punjab, there's a dish that is called pinya. Okay, now it is just a sweet uh, snack dish, a pretty heavy one, which consists of many different types of nuts and seeds. Now we have almonds, walnuts, raisins, and flax, and sesame seeds. Everything can be put in these sweet Punjabi servings we call pinni. But it does not mean that you can eat them. It is going to be heavy on your stomach and not good for you. Instead, you can eat almonds and walnuts uh, in a crushed form. You can have them in your soup, you can have them in your milk, but don't consume them in very high amount, but do consume them regularly. Next is dairy product. We are going to choose cow milk over buffalo milk just because of the fat content because we do not want to consume excess amount of calories. If we already have higher levels of triglycerides and VLDLs, we need to keep ourselves in calorie deficit for a while so that we can lose that excess amount of stored energy that we have. We are also going to avoid the milk paneer, okay, the milk cheese and the heavy creams. Rest, you can have your cup of milk, you can have your small glass of lassi, or you can also have your small bowl of curd. Always remember, a heart patient will drink his milk in a small cup rather than a large one, will eat his curd in a small bowl, will drink his lassi or buttermilk in a small glass. You can have it multiple times in a day, but do not consume in large quantities in one sitting. So moving on next, what do we have here? We have fruits. Now in fruits, if you are a diabetic, or you have already higher levels of triglycerides and VLDLs for coming three to four months, stop the consumption of fruits altogether. Where do fruits benefit a heart patient? They have tons of antioxidants, they have vitamins, they have minerals, they have fiber, they are a good natural source of energy and phytonutrients and antioxidants, but they also have sugar in them. Now, the fruit sugar will also cause a rise in your blood glucose levels. If you are already suffering from hyperlipidemia, that is excess of lipids in or high levels of lipids in your blood, then you have to avoid consumption of fruits for a couple of months, stabilize your lipids, and then you can enjoy small quantities of food, fruits which are lower on the glycemic index as well as lower on the glycemic load. Don't only believe the glycemic index of a food, you have to also cross check the glycemic load of that particular food. Last is lean protein, fatty fish and egg whites. By the meaning of lean protein, I mean you have to avoid red meat because it has high fat content and we are trying to keep you in a little calorie deficit so that your body starts using the triglycerides that you have stored in from the last previous couple of years or if you are overweight we have to consume less calories than you actually burn. The best options in lean protein for you can be chicken breast or other parts of chicken they are that are low on fats which are fat free cuts. Cook them in a soup form, cook them in a roasted or steamed form, do not cook them in a fried or sorted form. The next good thing for you is a fatty fish. Now we are going for lean proteins when it comes to chicken, but we are going for a fatty fish because fatty fish has higher amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. So that are very important for our health. So we are going to choose a fattier fish, but in terms of chicken, we are going to choose lean protein. And when it comes to eggs, we are going to consume egg whites if we feel weakness. Egg whites are proportional to the general body weakness that we feel. The more weakness, the more egg whites you can have. The less weak you feel, the less number of egg whites you can have. A heart patient can have up to six to eight egg whites every day if he is too weak to even get out of his bed. So once you start recovering, lower the number of egg whites, but eat lean protein, chicken soup, fish, and egg whites. If you are a vegetarian, so always choose more pulses than 
whole grains. So eat more amount of dal, more amount of pulses. You can have some amount of soya paneer. You can also have some soya bean and soya bean chunks. Even though they are highly processed and I do not recommend soya products. But as a last resort, if you are a vegetarian and you can't drink uh, protein supplements or medical supplements, then the only option left for you is soya processed foods so they might help you in gaining some of the body strength and then you can stop them and continue with the rest of your diet so in an overall package eat less amount of cereal more amount of pulses and vegetables do have some lean protein every day in your diet keep the portions of your dairy small avoid green leafy vegetables do consume nuts and cereals every day eat fruit if you are a non-diabetic and you have normal levels of lipid in your body the best oil for a heart patient is extra virgin olive oil when you use it in raw form. You do not have to heat it, you do not have to cook it or else you are going to destroy all the heat sensitive beneficial components that are present in your olive oil. The second best oil that you can have is flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil can also help cardiovascular disease in reversing the atherosclerotic changes. So I hope everybody has liked this video. If you do a liking this content, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. So if you like this video, you can share this video and the whole playlist with anyone you actually care about or any person in your friend circle or in your family who's suffering from a heart disease. Please provide enough knowledge to them so that they can take better care of themselves. Also, if you are not a patient of heart, if you are not suffering from any cardiac disease, try to adopt these type of dietary changes in your life. If you want to avoid and if you want to stay disease free for the later part of your life. This is the last video of this playlist. After this, the next time I will be seeing you, we are going to be talking about hypertension and cardiovascular accidents like stroke and traumatic brain injuries. I thank each and everyone who has watched this playlist from starting till the end. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, you take care of yourself.